In this video, we'll go over the most common types of hernias. Those are inguinal, femoral, and ventral or incisional hernias. We'll start with inguinal hernias. Inguinal hernias can be split into direct versus indirect hernias. Direct hernias are most common in adult males. They involve bowel going directly through a weak spot in the abdominal wall in the transversalis fascia. These will be medial to the inferior epigastric vessels, lateral to the rectus abdominis, and through the superficial but not the internal inguinal ring. This puts the hernia inside of Hesselbach's triangle, which I'll discuss shortly. Indirect hernias are present in young, usually infant, males. They occur lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels because they travel through both the internal and external inguinal rings. This type of hernia occurs due to a failure of the processus vaginalis to obliterate, allowing a patent channel through which bowel can herniate. These hernias occur outside of Hesselbach's triangle. The Hesselbach triangle is made up of the rectus abdominis medially, the inferior epigastric vessels supralaterally, and the inguinal ligament infralaterally. Direct hernias travel through this triangle, helping to distinguish them from indirect hernias. Femoral hernias occur in females. They are inferior to the inguinal ligament and involve the herniation of small bowel through the femoral canal. They always require surgery due to a risk of incarceration that may reach 50%. Ventral or incisional hernias are hernias that protrude through a previous surgical incision. Hernias are generally diagnosed on physical exam or imaging, such as ultrasound. On exam, there will be a visible or palpable mass that enlarges with bearing down or coughing. The hernia should be reducible unless it is incarcerated. Erythema and warmth, as well as sudden excruciating pain, are warning signs for strangulation. Reducible hernias should be treated with elective surgery if the patient is a good surgical candidate. Non-reducible hernias are incarcerated. They should be treated with urgent surgery. If the hernia becomes strangulated, meaning ischemic with sudden pain, peritoneal signs, fever, leukocytosis, or erythema and warmth of the hernia, or if a small bowel obstruction occurs, meaning the patient develops nausea, vomiting, and abdominal distension, the patient should go to surgery emergently. Many resources say to attempt to reduce an unreducible hernia manually with the patient in Trendelenburg, but in real life, a non-reducible hernia with signs of ischemia should not be reduced, as this requires pushing ischemic, possibly infarcted bowel back into the abdomen. This may lead to peritonitis and sepsis. Surgical treatment involves reducing the hernia or removing any necrotic bowel and either reanastomosing or, if inflammation is present, making an ostomy to be reanastomosed several weeks later. Repair of the abdominal wall is with hernioplasty, meaning a mesh is used to close the abdominal wall, or herniorophy, meaning that the abdominal wall is sutured closed. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more great videos. Remember, if you don't want to miss it, look below and click it. Check the description for more great study resources.